forever. Dog. Race chaser. Wow, wow, wow. Hello. Hello. Hello, and welcome back to Race Chaser, Chaser. Classic, Classic. A podcast dedicated to the discussion, dissection, and dissemination of every single episode of RuPaul's, RuPaul's Drag, Drag Race. Race. Starting from the very beginning. My name is Alaska. Oh, yeah. Get, get that in. That's Excuse my song. Excuse me. Just because it's your song. season. I was in the music video. But Listen, wait, 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 I bring wait, the beat. Wait, wait. My name's Alaska. What's yours? Hi, I'm Willem. <laughs> Commence. Congrats. Shake. Shake. Down. Down. <laughs> That's um, when they announced the ticket prices for DragCon. <laughs> Commence. <laughs> shake. shake. Down. down. <laughs> <laughs> I was so worried because I couldn't find the outline and you said hello and I was like, guess we're starting. And then I was like, you know what? I have this memorized. I could do this off book. I mean, it's oh no, it's no, sta- it's no station nineteen. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's a book! <laughs> Holy shit! Yeah, girl, I did disseminations all the way. Uh, have you I, have you since opened and located the outline? Or are no, you off book no, with no, the no, whole no, 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 no. I'm just what? sketching right now. I'm looking. I got every file on my whole fucking desktop open. Girl. Where the hell? Oh, here we go. Hello. This that's is, hot yes. sauce. That is scalding hot goss. This is a very exciting episode because this is the moment. This is the moment that counts. This is the moment that counts. This is season five, RuPaul's Drag Race. This first season I appeared on, well, I mean, I appeared on a few different seasons, but this was the first Thank time you. I got to walk into the workroom and be a contestant. Mm-hmm. You were casting Kathy on every season before that. They're like, oh, look, Miss Casting Kathy. She does a casting special. Uh, yes. And, Cast, uh, you, yes. you never got mm-hmm. on, but you finally made it. And this episode is, uh, Baby, appropriately I called. It. I, I made it. it. I see the work. Um, we were all feeling like that song when yeah, we walked into it's the It's Rue Hollywood or bust. And you made yeah. it. You made it to Hollywood. You brought your bags and, and your trash and your things and uh, <laughs> my bag walk, of dirty laundry. You walk into the workroom. They, you're a middle girl for the workroom, which is kind of surprising. They put you in the middle slot, but we'll get to that. They did, yeah. Um, yeah. It starts with the episode starts with like a montage of the previous queens, and it said, "My next drag superstars all have one thing in common: they were all busted <laughs> and found guilty of being sickening." A new trial begins as we show every single fucking runway outfit in order in this fucking teaser. (laughs) Oh, they did? They did. I mean, they don't do this anymore because the first... The girls count. Well, now, yes. People, they only show things from the first episode nowadays in Mm. the, like, super cut of what happens this season because it you can go through and you can probably count how many looks and how many runways and you can kind of get an idea of who stays around longer. Yeah, that makes Uh, sense. And this opening sequence is a montage with that. It just has it all, but um, everything bad makeup. It's got fake fights, stunts, (laughs) uh, forced catchphrases, iconic moments and Mr. X aplenty. So many misdirections. Yeah. Um, but the first direction that we're going is in detoxes because she's the one like yeah. just flowing into this workroom. She says, holy shit, we're here. She says, eat it up and crown it. She looks so perfect. Yeah, she looks great. And this was, I mean, Queen I think B. It, it, yes, it was, uh, it was a long time coming for Detox to get on this show as well, I think. I think that she was in talks with them for years, and it was like, finally, it's time to have Detox. Detox was the fucking queen of drag in the Hollywood scene. Just yeah. point blank, period. And so this was like, this was a huge moment to see her there. 
uh, just looking perfect. The black or the black and yellow, the top hat, the feather, the fucking blonde. Just really such a salute for me. So and then in walks her man, uh, Roxy Andrews, twenty eight. Uh, she is as soon as you see her in detox, you're like, oh, those two, they're they're gonna be fun. And she's Dear wearing friends. she's wearing black sequins jacket and shorts. Um, yes. She she has a problem with shiny shiny little hard things sequins and then payettes later in the episode. <laughs> Girl, they but, got her together. And anytime she announced, she called a bit. She must just mispronounce fabrics. That must just be like a thing. Like she or or Xanza. <laughs> yeah, maybe drag queens mispronounce all kinds of things. So who cares? She looks fucking great. She's in like she a, she's in a classic Andrews classic. hair. Yeah, classic Andrew's hair, a, a very short short and a blazer. So she's there for business, but also for for fun. Oh yeah, yeah. Because <sighs> she her legs are just outstanding. Yeah. What does she say to detox? Because on the on the subtitle, it's <laughs> mash. M-A-S-H. It's it's like the sound that they make each other go mash. <laughs> you have yeah, to cover it, your lips with your teeth and go mash. It's it, like. Yeah. It's kind of like I, Padge with an M, but like also a, a goat yodel. And I then thought like, it was like major, like mage, but like it's not because it took me several days to get to the bottom of what the fuck they were saying. And yeah, yeah it's just like a sort of, it's one it's of a, those drag things. It's a get your attention. And so you can call her nah. that. It, yeah. It's it's everything it needs to be in that moment. Like, like we all we have words like that that are multifunctional use, like utility yeah, words, and that's absolutely. definitely one of them for them. Um, J. Jolie, friend of the pod, she walks in. She says, "Hey, girls, hi!" She's yeah. so excited to be there, and she says she's serving up fish, tuna on a platter, tuna on a platter. Um, and she is wearing pants, a corset, and a hat covered in what looks like um. If a jewelry cabinet got caught in an earthquake and then, like, you put <laughs> a hat in there covered in hot glue and then you just put stuff on it. She looks fucking great. She's cute. She's here. She's living. And so begins the edit of her laugh being just pasted on anytime she says anything. <laughs> this was just like my high thing. They started just pasting it on anytime I spoke anywhere. It was, hi. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I would appear on screen. Oh, hello. How's it going? It's the same thing with J. Jolie's infectious, charming laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so she didn't laugh that much like that? I think she, I mean, she has a very giggly disposition and I think her laugh stood out. But they but definitely I, re-added it. I think they were casting her as the very lighthearted, bubbly, you know, Laughter girl. She's the laugh girl. <laughs> She's the laugh girl. Tropez. She's the Got laugh it. gal. Well, the girl that gets no laughs is Serena Cha Cha. <laughs> she says, This is the best quinceanera present ever. And Detox goes, Oh, yeah, is it your quinceanera? <laughs> <laughs> Detox already not having it from the go. She's like, Oh, this girl from wanted the, to be cute. No, 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 no. Walking in. To the room. From the walk, D is on it. I love her. So she's wearing a short pink dress with exposed tool and spots. I don't get why it's pulled up. Um, she looks cute. She looks great. Um, I, uh, d- yes, it's perplexing the way that the dress looks as though someone was rifling through her underpinnings and trying to, <laughs> trying to get at her. And she didn't readjust herself after the interaction happened. The tool is is poofed out and the pink dress is like bunched up. It's very confusing. Is this soft sculpture? What's confusing is seeing all y'all with your old faces because Alyssa Edwards has had some soft uh, sculpture since. Uh, uh, she uh, walks in next. She says she won Miss Gay America, but the crown was taken away from her. She says she's the Vanessa Williams drags. Um, and immediately we get a... Girl, I she goes straight to the mirror in Alyssa Edwards yeah. fashion. Uh, yeah, she yeah, is yeah. AE from the get go, um, and she is wearing a little black dress with the some sort of Christmas tree skirt for maybe um, a modern home in the nineties cape <laughs> thing. Yeah, uh, yeah, so it's drag, and then a little um, fascinator on um, a, a three tone, you know, twenty seven yeah. to light brown hair. It's great. It's drag. Yeah. 
I um yeah, I remember thinking Alyssa was was way older than she than she was. She oh, was because pres- of her drag, yeah. Well, her drag, yes, her drag. She put everything on. She looked way older. I mean, you know, she's she's stunning and gorgeous. But that was my first impression of her. Um, and of course, she's got to get in the mirror. I got to get up in this gig, girl. Let me see yeah. um, everything. Mm-hmm. They they got good TV from the get go with her. Um, and then Jinx Monsoon literally oh walks in, right in, and mm-hmm. she just says, she's so natural from the get. She says, I can hear y'all cackling from down the street. Yes, uh, she is castigating the girls from, <laughs> from the moment she walks in. Could you fucking whores keep it down? Because it's true. <laughs> you stand outside the door until the people tell you to walk in, and all you can hear is, ah! <laughs> <laughs> Not the, of your first bitch. Uh right. Well, yeah, I guess I guess yeah. you didn't hear anything. You heard stone silence. Mm-mm. But I knew I was first at that point. So I was like, oh, I'm first. And I started talking. And they're like, just let him go. <laughs> just yeah. let her go. <laughs> <laughs> just let her go. Um, Jinx, Jinx looks great. Though. She does. Very Saint-Tropez. Very Saint-Tropez. <laughs> Squimsuit category. Roxy's reading for the moment. Yeah. Jinx looks it. <laughs> Roxy oh, and Dee. Oh. Roxy and D are the, uh, the the guys in the balcony. What are their names? Herber Bourbon. Right. Statler and Waldorf. Them. The, yeah. The Roxy and D boots are them. They um, fully are. Uh, Penny, just Penny reading from from. The the moment penetration. Wonder what Hello, they said about boys. Penny. <laughs> oh. Penny lets everybody know, or uh, they they edit it to let everybody know that she won the drag <laughs> online voting contest. Uh huh. And she is just sporting a classic drag cocktail dress, just a little cocktail dress. Penetration is drag, drag, excellent. Yeah, drag, per- drag. Period. Mm-hmm. She's funny. She comes in with a joke. She was lighthearted. She was very very lovely. So uh, good on the mic. Always so, so friendly. Good on the mic. You need a wig. She's got eighteen, right, in, and, on her head at any given time. Right, exactly. She can wear some fucking hair. She's a tall guy when yeah. she's a boy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> wait, I can't. What? I guess because I'm just thinking about her pink eyebrow that's like stained on her, on her, on her, Certain uh, and then and then the shade. products stain the face. <laughs> And then Anyone the shade boy eyebrow. So there's like two kind of invisible eyebrows in her interview. Drag is hard, okay? Drag, drag, drag is hard. Drag, but it just got me. It made me go, and they sent her home first. Girl, Damn. I, we'll, we'll get to her. it. I can, okay. They got her gal. Uh, and she was the winner well, of the fan vote. So, you uh, know, but we'll get to that. Oh, uh, I'm hungry. Uh, well, you uh, you have the soup of the day coming oh, right Vivian up. Panay. It's Vivian Panay. Oh, and she has hey, the catchphrase, "Hey y'all." <laughs> <laughs> it she looks like people beautiful. weren't really doing catchphrases. People, yeah. yeah, it doesn't. Right. I mean, back then, back then we weren't kind of. It we, was the, just you walk into a, a room single digit and girls were normal. It's like, say oh, hi. You, <laughs> so you walk into a room like you would any other room, just because right. there's okay, yeah. Now it's like they launched the merch in right. three different colors yeah. when they walk in the room with a cartoon of them. I um, have 3,000 units speaking. of a shirt that says, <laughs> Hi! <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the stage, the legendary, inimitable, and my co host, Alaska Thunderfuck 5027. Yeah, I she like said, this look. I, I stand by this look. It holds up. She I, says, I have a very famous boyfriend. Which I'm quoting Manila Luzon, but it's when I say that, oh, because Manila Luzon drag. said that deep about drag Easter Sahara. Egg. Yeah, I love that. I didn't know. Yeah, huh. um, they show clips of you know of me being on the reunion and such. Um, mm-hmm. I kiss Alyssa Edwards' hand. Uh, I I went around and greeted everyone. I got the impression that everyone everyone you kissed the Duchess right on the hand. I kissed the Dutch. Yes, I did. Oh. Well, that's what you do, um, the Duchess. I uh, I immediately was really relieved to see Detox there. She was the only person I knew. Some of the other girls knew who I was just because, you know, because I was featured Legends on the previous before you. season. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, the horse mask was a choice. I like this look. I think Me it's too. Pretty- it holds up. It's timeless and it's classic. And you look great. 
It was um, a plastic tablecloth I had put, I had sealed with a piece of duct tape in the back. But it was really? black was- and gold, which was representing Pittsburgh. That wasn't Sequel Queen? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, moods of Norway. Yeah, it wasn't lined. It actually was a liner. A table. It was a, a, table. a, yeah. a bin liner. A bin liner. Um, Honey Mahogany walks in looking sickening. Yes. An, uh, a vision in white. And she is the first queen from San Fran. She just says, hey, sisters. She. I, I remember just thinking she looked like RuPaul. Like oh, she looked gorgeous. like she was in a Ru- like one of RuPaul's music videos or something as her stand in. Detox gorgeous. said the same thing, except she said not as polished. Oh. Like, I know they make you say something about each girl, but like who I'm sure when Detox did that, she probably didn't think, oh, this is they're going to put it in the girl's intro and make us enemies from the get. Whatever. Shady ass reading whores. Um, <laughs> but I think Honey Mahogany looked looked amazing. Gorge. Um Then Ivy Winters comes in. Hey, ladies. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Her outfit is so cute. It's so fun. A caution tape skirt. She just yes. looks polished. She looks like drag excellence. She knows what she's doing. She knows how to um, construct drag. She can make a hot air balloon. And those things are like for people not to die in. And she's responsible for that. She knows how to do a hem. She does. This is not the house of Barry. Yeah, she can do it everywhere you look. There's a hem. Hem, hem, hem. Literally everywhere you look. Hemming and hem. She was hemming and hemming. I'm hemming and hawing about it. Um, uh, Monica Beverly Hills walks in and says, hello, girls. (laughs) <laughs> uh, this is a fun garment I think it was yarn It looks like Peruvian yarn When it flipped up in the water You really saw like h- how like thick it was And like it was just like a great You know how skinny gorgeous model girls Can wear like bulky things And it still looks fashion She yeah. looked amazing in it I'd look like a fucking gumdrop warrior Right She looked yeah. great This was a really like um, A really There's a lot of detail to get into On this yeah, look I really liked it and Lanesha Sparks comes in, says nothing, and does nothing, and all the girls just gag Ugh. because she doesn't need to do anything or say anything because she is Lanesha Sparks. She's trade. She's gorgeous. She's everything. She's wearing a yellow stone dress with, like, nude illusions, and the nude illusion matches. She comes in doing everything right, Lanesha Sparks. I uh, Those Puerto Rican queens can get a girl together for her package. Girl, I wanted to quit drag on the spot when Lanesha Sparks walked in, and I'm not I joking. I felt that way about Kenya. Exactly. Yeah. When I tell you, I was like, oh, this is her season. She's going to win. Top three. I, yeah. She was giving me very, like, Tyra Sanchez <clears throat> Jada, vibes. Essence Paul, just, like, strong, confident woman. Perfect drag excellence. Yeah. So gorgeous. I love this look. You could wear this look today if you wanted to look fucking amazing. Uh, um, fabulous. I'll- also amazing, Coco Montrese. The diva oh has arrived. Gosh. Oh and my god! She looks like she was just running through a train station. Just grabbed a paper <laughs> before the train. You know, she just came in from Paper Mill Playhouse. She was doing tryouts there, but uh, she needed to come into the city for a meeting. She's very that. Everything and must be left for Trent. Girl, the 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 face crack of the century with Alyssa seeing it and then choosing what to do. She's like, "Let me fix my hair, and then I'll put my head down and turn." Just the fucking it, epic Lord of the Rings fight music. They're yeah. setting it up from the get go. Um, oh my and God. it's exciting. Yeah. Um, Alyssa and I will have our moment, Coco says, because we need a moment. <laughs> this was the thing. Yes. Let, let's go on a break and then we'll talk more about it. Okay. The face crack of this entry. <laughs> Breaking up with your old wireless provider just got a whole lot easier thanks to Mint Mobile. Mint Mobile is introducing their unlimited data plan for just 30 bucks a month. Let that sink in. Hm, give it a moment. An unlimited plan for 30 bucks. How much is your soon-to-be ex wireless provider charging you? Girl, for people who hate their phone bill and are ready to cut ties with big wireless, Mint Mobile offers premium unlimited plan for just $30 a month. By going online and eliminating traditional costs of retail, Mint Mobile passes significant savings on to you. Significant! So significant. All plans come with unlimited text and talk, plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. 
to use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and keep your same phone number along with all your existing contacts. And if you're not 100% satisfied, Mint Mobile has you covered with their seven-day money-back guarantee. Break up with Big Wireless and switch to Mint Mobile's premium unlimited data plan for 30 bucks a month. To get your new unlimited wireless plan for just $30 a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash drag. That's mintmobile.com slash drag. Drag. Cut your unlimited wireless bill to 30 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash drag. Let's talk, okay? Let's talk about better help. Is there something interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving your goals? Can the answer be to be me like everything, all of it, everything around me and the world? Because all of it's out of control right now. Absolutely. It's easy to spiral when thinking about all the things that are out of our control. Um, well, it, it's great to talk with someone about all of our feelings and working on our mental health is super important. BetterHelp is a great resource, especially now. BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. There is a broad range of expertise available at BetterHelp, which may not be locally available in person in many areas. And you'll get timely and thoughtful responses from your counselor. Plus, you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions so you won't ever have to leave your house or sit in a stuffy, germ-filled waiting room. BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches, so they make it easy and free to change counselors if needed, and it's more affordable than traditional offline counseling. You can read their testimonials that are posted daily at BetterHelp.com slash reviews. Reviews. These testimonials are great because you can hear how real people feel about the services offered by BetterHelp. And they feel mighty real. This review says, my therapist is amazing. I'm so grateful for her work with me. She is patient and understanding and has a heart of gold. She is also very talented. (laughs) I love her. I love that. So just visit BetterHelp.com slash drag. Drag. That's better H-E-L-P. And join the over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. In fact, so many people have been using BetterHelp, they're recruiting additional experienced professional counselors in all 50 states. And a special offer for Race Chaser listeners right now. Get 10% off your first month at BetterHelp.com slash drag. That's BetterHelp.com slash drag. Drag. Drag for 10% off your first month. Uh, well, I just applied some face crack. Um, oh, did onto you? My face. Is it, col- is it yeah. col- color revolution? Yeah, no, yes, yes, of it which is. I checked with our winner in this episode. They say the girl, well. You know, they they we'll we'll talk about it here, but um after this face crack, but Jinx and there there's some scoop. I have scoop, bitch. I journalized. What? <laughs> what was it about the color of? Okay, in this episode they announced it's a lifetime supply. Uh-huh. And then <laughs> apparently later <laughs> in the episode luck, they announced a sickening supply oh. or a later in the season. Jinx never got anything but the makeup kit that was in the workroom for her. Well, so, liar, uh, liar, pants on fire. I'm why would go. you? I, I don't know why you would want any more color evolution makeup than that. There's a little bit of uh, <laughs> they they explain that there's some sort of history that happened between Kokomon Trees and Alyssa. Uh, it feels like an unresolved. It feels like the sequel is already here. The way they amp yeah. it up, it makes yeah, us yeah, yeah, yeah. wonder what it's about. It feels juicy. They don't. They aren't specific. It's their Drag Race is good at, at this. They did it with my whole like evolution of stuff, and they didn't answer questions yeah. about my disqualification. They're good at like creating lore and legend from you know from two from just some drag, you know, drag beef and bullshit. And um, some credit has to go to Coco and Alyssa <laughs> because they were very tight lipped about it. Everyone in the room was like, "Wait, what is the story between you two? And it was. We'll have our moment later. We'll talk. Yeah, we'll talk about it. They were very smart because they were like, "We're not going to give away the story on day one. Not day us. one. No, 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 we're no. We're not no, going to no. tell anybody what happened. This is neither of their first rodeos. No, no, no. 
But also, a lot of the girls knew what happened. I mean, Detox knew, Roxy knew. I mean, I didn't happened. know. I didn't know. I well, didn't the video, the the girls are gotten together with that all too familiar siren, and they say, "Ooh, girl, you yes. got pejoratives." Yes. Um, and the video message, you you do her voice better, so you do it. Welcome, my queens. I told you California was the place you ought to be, so you tightened up your tuck and you flow to Beverly Monica. Hills, adjacent, that is. So, whether you're a fresh princess of Bel Air, a Malibu Barbie, or just serving real housewife realness to get your big break in Rue Hollywood, you need to make an even bigger splash and really shake things up. Oh my goodness, earthquake. I think it's the big one. Oh. And then she has an orgasm. Slower. And- faster. Remember to snatch this crown. You need to fake it until you make it. Squirt, squirt. Then RuPaul walks in. Uh-huh. And this was I genuine. We were very, very, very excited. Honestly. This- and he looked great. That powder blue suit. And like so many of you had tried so long to get on at this point. Yes. Other than other than Serena Chacha. First time out the gate. <laughs> um <laughs> <laughs> well, she makes a point to say it. Um, uh, so this I, was it's, a time. It's, it's yes, genuinely we, nice. Detox is crying when so she wins nice. the mini challenge. Like she yeah. works so hard to get on. You know, we um, really cared, and I get the impression that I think. I mean, I think RuPaul and Michelle. I think everyone was still having a really nice time. It wasn't just like let's let's do the cog in the machine they were they were really enjoying it the show was really hitting its swing and they were just everyone was having an amazing time and very excited to be I there, also feel like myself at this point, included at this point they've been working together a while too because season 5 was filmed after all stars 1 mm. because it was drag you mm-hmm. and then all and then all star well it was yeah, drag you, and then All Stars one, and then season five. So like they they were operating, you know. Oh yeah, I feel Definitely. like I feel like this is a great season. Um, and one of the reasons is because of the prizes there it's a hundred thousand dollars, and you're headlining <laughs> Drag Race tour. I have to tell you though, when she said. Okay, you get all these prizes. You get this, this, and this. A one of a kind trip. Do lady, dee dee dee. The money and a didn't cash go up. Prize of. One hundred thousand dollars. We were all a little like, "Oh, nice!" Because you thought it would be more. Well, keep in mind the prize money had increased every year up until this point. It had oh. never been the same two years in a row. So we yeah. assumed. I don't know. I, Have you I ever don't... met World of Wonder? Girl, well, girl, listen, they're capping 100... it. They're capping it. A hundred thousand dollars is nothing to scoff at, and just like logistically, um, saying like. One hundred twenty-five thousand dollars seems seems like weaker somehow. It's like yeah. it's like a it's weird to, number. It's hard to ante up from there, but I understand leaving it because like, what are they going to do? Two hundred, and then the next even year they're, even they're in for like two hundred thousand dollars. It makes it seem like uh, that's kind of a weird number too. It's like why wouldn't you go yeah, to a million. a million at that point? So uh, it makes sense, but we were all a little um, plutzilla that we were getting <laughs> prize money. <laughs> And then the mini challenge. And then they said, let's fuck up all y'all's drag. Uh, it's a Mike Ruiz water tank photo shoot, which is like remnants of like top model challenges. Everybody has to do it. Uh, so s- some girls will complain. And, um, you know, that's not very professional. Um, but <laughs> being tossed to the elements is always like a drag race first episode, like standard. Yeah. So Jade is the first one up and she doesn't even know why she's there. And then she's, and she doesn't know there's a big aquarium in the room. Did they back her into the room? Like, she, or Listen, is she just so, she was she's like nervous. Hollywood, a big set? Oh my! Like I love Jade, so I believe this. Um, she was and nervous. She, she didn't know. And but keep in mind, they told us you're going to be doing something that could potentially fuck your makeup up. So Matthew came in and set our fucking faces for filth with the setting spray so we didn't know but we kind of knew we knew something something fucked up was gonna happen with water or whatever but we didn't we didn't know but they did prepare us by like spraying our faces with setting spray did you know matthew before that um i had met matthew yes 
Cool. Um, they told us on our day to wear stuff for our entrance look that we didn't care if it got ruined. <laughs> Hair. So I wore Dolce. <laughs> uh, did I? No, I wore I I wore Iron Fist. I was trying to get into the RuPaul good graces, so I wore an Iron mm. Fist bikini. And um, oh, wow. some, work. some of the girls do this for their challenge too with the Iron Fist. They're smart. You'll see where that ends. Foreshadowing. Um, Detox and Roxy both slay this challenge. I'm not surprised. They're Orlando girls. Orlando girls are used to being wet, wet and wild. It's their theme. Wet and wild. Uh huh. Uh, Serena's photo um, looks like a doll you threw underwater and tried to keep there. It doesn't Uh, work. Yeah. So they get a great frog leg shot. Blade. (laughs) And Alyssa does um, does fine, and her picture is actually really, really pretty. Um, oh, so gorgeous. Her so legs sickening. can just yeah. spread from there to there. And once with the her face of clicked ease. in to where the body was already performing at, like it was yeah. like picture. Like I thought she she might have won actually seeing it. Um, I forgot who won <laughs> at the end, but um, Alyssa looked great, but she fell walking out and it was really funny. She's like, at least I did it gracefully. I was like, that, okay. <laughs> I love Alyssa's like nervous like g- like girl on the phone operator voice like girl. at least I did it gracefully <laughs> <laughs> like girl that voice is long gone <laughs> <laughs> um, are we speaking to the woman of the house uh, Jinx is here and she loses her contacts and she's she's literally looks like the girl from okay. Tangled but like underwater she's just like all hair and then like She's ha- she's struggling. She's having trouble. Just a Struggle. little, a little bit tangled. And is she that- explains that she did not know how to swim. She her, her uncle, uncle pushed, pushed her, off her along. in a river. Yeah, yeah. trauma so- triggered. <laughs> but speaking of um, struggling, uh, then it's my turn. Yeah. Uh, what can you tell us about this? this okay, let me, let me do that. Okay, first of all. Okay, okay baby. St- baby. Let me start. Let me... Okay. Baby, you need to get it together first before you want to read. read. <laughs> baby, we need to get it together before you want to read. Um, well, no, this was this was horrible. I did not do a good job. That that, that that's uh, very apparent. Um, Wait, did I... you, first, did you have contacts in? Because I know that you have vision problems and that could be like water thing. Were you I wearing was your... wearing custom black, like prescription contacts which Did you were take my them out? The, yes i was like i'm not i can't go swimming it, with these in because i need these for the whole season because so they lost hers right exactly they brought me two little dixie cups i was being high in maintenance and demanding on day one diva they wow. brought me two dixie cups with fucking water in them and i took my contacts out so first of all i'm climbing the thing totally blind not I'm even also, saline Ugh. i'm a, no i'm also wearing plastic so bear in mind that plastic um, water doesn't permeate through it. So it was creating like a bell jar, uh, like a be- like a diving bell that would <laughs> not submerge. So yeah. as much as I was trying, I could I couldn't submerge myself. And Why didn't I, you go in head first? I. I I don't know. I, 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 if I still watching this, I'm so baffled. Like you watch Lanesha go down under the water and just sort of like linger there. And just like, I'm like, how do you <laughs> go underwater? I don't know if it, it, it was really hard. And I did get out and I said, you know what? I fail. I can't do this. And they said, well, you can go in and have one more try. And I turned around and I said, okay, I'm going to do that. Which, and of they, course, and they're they not. didn't show you doing it? We did end up getting a photograph. It was not a good photograph, but I did end up getting a photograph. I went back in. They gave me a second chance, but they didn't show that because, you know, it's not as they were editing. They were editing you from the start. <laughs> but I never should have said, oh, Tough I give too. up. I fail. I can't do it. I never should have done that. I should have just, like, taken whatever shitty photo I ended up getting. But, Shoulda, um, coulda, woulda. Lanesha was fabulous. She was last, she was. and she she gave them everything you didn't for sure. Um, Nothing moved. The hair stayed perfectly no, in place. The garment. I mean, it was like just dipping a fabulous. Christmas ornament in the water. It looked just as beautiful <laughs> under the water, only shinier. Honestly, so Lanesha is everything. Um, so beautiful. I did a podcast with Morgan and I think like a couple of the girls, Morgan and Mariah, maybe Angina, and like Lanesha was there and. I like I tried to like 
talk to him and like hit on him and like it was the second time I've done it where I've tried to hit on him when he was a boy and I forgot that he was my sister because I've only met him twice and each time I'm like who's that well girl he's so fucking handsome it oh. makes for good um reality television programming if you date oh. other Rue girls so I think you <laughs> should go for it okay yeah you can go up into a Ferris wheel together and rent out the whole pod <laughs> for you and the camera crew. Oh, yeah. The the 12 person pod. Probably. And then you could just sit there and be like, mm hmm. I haven't yeah. seen that episode yet. Because that's. Oh, it's fabulous. Check it out. I can't wait. Um, so back in the workroom, the girls are de-dragging and taking looks at each other. And um, the dolls have a question for Jinx, to, and so do I. Why did she have one eye covered? Was she in some pirate intern program we didn't know about, or was it because she lost her contacts? I think it had to do with the contacts. I think she had some sort of abrasion on her eye because of going in the water with contacts in. And I oh, think it yeah. fucked shit up. I, I think that's what the eye patch is about. Roxy's very perplexed. <laughs> Roxy's like, she's wearing an eye patch. I don't know what's going on. So wait, you have narcolepsy? <laughs> Does that mean you fall asleep out of nowhere? And Jinx explains that like, no, it's not like it is. It's not just know. Bigelow. <laughs> right. It's not like it is in the movies. She's not like the, the guy in Moulin Rouge who just falls asleep in the middle of the... You know. <laughs> Oh yeah, but wait till she takes her teeth out. Um, the next, we're gonna take <laughs> a break. Yeah, let's take a break take and a break. take our teeth out. <laughs> <laughs> you know those nights where you can't sleep and you toss and you turn, only to be a full zombie and a raging monster the next day. Well, we're done with all that. Yes, we are. That's why we want to tell you about Sleep Cycle. Mm, Sleep Cycle is the app to help you improve your sleep. It tracks and analyzes your sleep and helps you wake up. Mine analyzes my sleep, and while I'm sleeping, the apps listen to your sounds to analyze your sleep patterns. Mm. Based on that, they can guide you to a routine that helps you get better sleep. Sleep Cycle has a great free option as well and some awesome enhanced features in the paid premium version. The free app not only does a sleep analysis with detailed information, it can also help you sleep train, fully integrate with Apple Health, and track you with or without an alarm. The premium version has features like a wake-up window that helps you rise when you're in light sleep, comparison mm. data to world sleep statistics. I was looking for those. And a sleep aid library with guides and stories. And don't worry, Sleep Cycle is not intrusive. You can just use it when you sleep and forget about it. Set it and forget about it. Dang. Seriously, it's easy to use. Just put it on your nightstand and as the days go by, just check the app to see if any new info, like sleep times or durations, even your snoring pattern, if you're that kind of girl. Oh, I am, for sure. And thankfully, there are no skills required to use the app. You're someone who sleeps? Well, then you're good to go. Go to sleepcycle.com slash drag today to start improving your sleep for free. At sleepcycle.com slash drag, you will get access to Sleep Cycle Premium for seven days absolutely free, or just click the link below. Try out the premium, and if you don't like it with all the bells and whistles, just use the free one. That's right. That's sleepcycle.com slash drag. drag. And start improving your sleep tonight for free. I knew it. I knew you were in drag. Secret sister. Put your teeth back in. We're on the, the air. Se- you know all the secrets in my spires, don't you? <laughs> yes. Uh, Are you ready? You're daywalking, honestly, right now. And honey, uh, speaking of daywalking, you were doing they it back got then, us, too. They got us fully together with this fucking... Y'all had fucking, your foreheads out. This fucking bus stop ass fucking double decker bus bullshit. When I tell you... They showed about 10 seconds of this song on the show, of us having a gay old time on the the roof of a double-decker bus. When I tell you it was a hellish, long, full day of driving us all around Hell's Half Acre 
<laughs> all around Hollywood, fucking well, Beverly Hills. It started Hill. downtown at the studio, too, because I recognize that from where they filmed All Stars 1 with the girls walking. And then they took you to Marco's, which is where I'm filming currently at One Street Over. So that's like at least like 20 minutes. Were you on top of the bus the whole 20 minutes or were you inside at least? We never saw the interior of the bus. Oh, we were stranded no. on the top in of the wigs? bus. In they downtown had LA? Us, they had us running this song over and over, trying different arm choreo, trying different angles, waving off the sides. Who was doing side. the arms? Was it Theron yelling, do these? Uh, probably. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but yeah, it was a harrowing day. It was very, very hot. <laughs> it was very rough. I mean, I girl. It was, it was July in the summer in LA. And then they didn't even use it. So. No. And what they did use, it felt so weird. Was it like a cross promo with the tour bus company? Like, what the fuck? I, I honestly have no idea. But we did wave at fake celebrities that weren't really there. And they have Coco Montreux in the interview chair saying, we were waving at celebrities. celebrities. This was fabulous. Like, no, Coco's no going to get the screen time. She will do. She will say it. It's just an example of, like, they tell you to say shit in that interview chair. Yeah. And the only way you get to go have dinner is if you fucking do it. So and never hold anyone accountable for what they say in the uh-uh. interview chair no. because you are under duress. Uh, and you were nowhere near Beverly Hills. <laughs> <laughs> no, nowhere, no, no. nowhere, not at gunpoint, not near it at all. You were in Hollywood no, 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 no. on Las yeah. Palmas, and then they said, no. "Oh, go around to the VIP," and you walk south, even though you're shown walking around the corner of World of Wonder a block away after into the yeah. dumpster area where they throw parties, where they used to throw fun yeah. parties. RuPaul would yeah, DJ yeah, there; yeah. they were great. Um, so oh, it's wow. like watching National Treasure and being from Philadelphia. You're like, how did they jump from 13th Street to Fifth Street all of a sudden? Right. Like Nick Cage, you couldn't have jumped that roof like that, bitch. Right. And it's my uh, neighborhood, so I feel pressed personally. Exactly. I mean, it's right by you. Um, we finally end up in the alley by World of Wonder, and RuPaul is there with the um COVID suit, um, the pink hazmat suit, which would be great for um the current day. Right. I um, think Marco made that. It's it's sickening and I want one. <laughs> um and we but, had to dumpster dive. I felt very at home. But you you got to meet Camille Grammer first. That must have been huge for everybody. She was actually very lovely that yeah, day. She, she was very nice. nice. She was yeah. very nice. I yeah. mean, she's your mortal enemy tomorrow. Oh, no, no, no. She stands up for you with no earring. Never mind. Yeah. I, I rescind. Thank I rescind. you. Thank you, yeah, Camille. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, so the maxi challenge is basically the girls diving in a dumpster for one minute, which is not a lot of time to collect stuff. Yeah. Um, and you have to make a red carpet runway look that screams Hollywood red carpet tour. Right. Uh, okay. I, so just I like was... every other challenge. I mean, the third one was like thrift Christmas. Third yeah. Se- what was season two? Curtains? Gone with the windows. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forget what yeah. season one was, but this is, you know, the season one challenge everybody knows is coming. Make an outfit out of something you wouldn't want to make an outfit out of. Um. And this dumpster dive is hectic, and the girls are getting hurt. Were Were you in any way damaged? I were mean, their it, bows thrown. It, it was chaotic, and like How many people dumpsters? were pushing and shoving. I think there were like I think there were like two or three. Did anybody try to uh, flip a dumpster or wheel it away? No, no, no. I don't think so. Was RuPaul egging you on? I don't think. I think. Or RuPaul was she gone got at that the point? Fuck out of there. <laughs> RuPaul got the fuck out of there because we there was shit flying everywhere. I was a little perplexed at how little trash there was. It was Iron very. Fist, it was very like shoes and c- clothes and fabric and like fucking like sequin like fabric. I was like, where's the fucking trash? I want to make some shit out of trash. So I located this green fucking cellophane? saran wrap yeah cellophane uh cellophane wax um yeah and that's what i focused on that's what i grabbed okay um well i'm glad there were no injuries um you do you almost poke someone's eye out though in the workroom when you start helicoptering your horse dick ev- everywhere were you putting it on specific work tables and saying that one's mine were you trying no. to intimidate the competition? Were you no. trying to say, hey, do you want to smell Sharon? Come here. Oh, Ugh. my God. No, I had always, I, I just really wanted to just, like, I, I 
worked so many years and so long to get into that fucking workroom that I was like, I want to be naked in this workroom. Like it's my home. Like I wanted to just like have that moment. Mm-hmm. And God bless Coco Montrese for saying that that line about uh, the horse, dick. horse mask. because because I, I tell you the legend is uh, way bigger than the actual dick. So God, thank you, Coco Montrese. For no, that. it's just I that you're wearing you. bigger hair now, and like it looks smaller. <laughs> it's still big. Um, yeah, I try. Yeah, yeah. Um, so Jade is pulling out this red sequin fabric, and Roxy says, "Oh, she got paylets." <laughs> so how do you say it? Payettes? It's payettes. It's oh, okay. um, French and it's like, it's one of those things that doesn't make sense in the English language and you just learn to say right. it right. Yeah, Otherwise yeah, yeah. you're, yeah. Um, but people say it all kinds of ways and that's fine. But um, Alyssa is is uh, is friends with, they're trying oh, to- Oh, you're my sister now. Uh, oh. Yeah. All the girls are trying to intone that Alyssa's trying to cozy up to get some fabric from Jade. Um, <laughs> yeah. And Coco says, be careful, Jade. And And if you want to see how long we were out in the fucking sun, just look at Alyssa's farmer's tan. Because we were out in the sun so long, she has a fucking tan strap from that day of being on the bus. When they gave us our directive for season one, they said, wear something you can can move in. And we knew it was like something during the day and whatever. Did they give you any directives for your uh, day walking? When you were out there, did they say it was going to be physical or outside or on the top of a bus or like to secure your wigs better? Because you had this weird like Maid Marian type of headpiece hat thing on. It looked like it could have been like a stewardess, like on the on the Arabian Airlines like with Emirates. Swag. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but but not as good. Yeah, what was that? <laughs> Hate you so much. Hate it, bitch. Well, this was years ago. I would have told you to your face I if I'd known you better. So much. I also, bought everyone that. Everyone had sunglasses. Every yes, queen has I believe they told us it's going to be day drag. Like, it's going to be daytime, mm-hmm. like, daytime realness or whatever Jada that Pink means. Smith Fish. Right. So, um, a lot of us were smart and wore sunglasses. I wore sunglasses and a hat because I know that... So- Daylight is no friend to the dragon. The dragon. Girl. <laughs> Hello, is this the mayor of New York? I was wondering if we could put the Statue of Liberty in a wig. <laughs> Hello. Uh yeah. The uh then RuPaul comes in for the work to, to the workroom for the walkthrough. Yeah. Walk walk. <laughs> and Coco explains that she just wants to keep her look kind of classy. Girl. <laughs> I had to look up from the, from the computer because I was like, what is she talking about? And then I was like, let me see this outfit. And then I saw the cones on the titties. <laughs> She is taking the going to Hollywood like look literal. And she said, you know what, baby? I'm from Vegas. This is subtle for me because I'm doing it in creams and neutrals. <laughs> she will go to the grave swearing that that's a subtle natural outfit because it's in creams and, and, and tops. <laughs> Bitch, I swear. Tops. And God bless Coco. I love her. her final look ended up coming together and Girl, looking really she was really peeing fierce. on the runway. She lived. Really she, fierce. She was, she was directing that episode, honestly, because yeah, she was telling everybody, was- we're going to talk later. We need a mo- Oh, yes, we do, Miss Alyssa. Yes, yes. yes. It was great. Um, yes. Um, Serena Chacha explains what soft sculpture is. And yeah, what I'm the glad fuck that is she, soft sculpture? I'm, I'm glad she's bringing some elevation to this <laughs> Does Silly that mean little like drag show. Fabric uh, as clothes. It's actually soft sculpture. Is that what she's saying? I think it is like literally piling on fabric to create like a, shapes um, with it rather oh, than like folding and, and sewing. Got it. Which okay. the ultimate look didn't end up working. But I, I do believe that soft Shit sculpture. sculpture. <laughs> oh my God. I believe it's it has terrible. the capability of looking very beautiful, but. RuPaul is kind of reading her for being directionless and not really knowing what the fuck. Well, I mean, and, and taking too long to assemble the outfit, which is the real problem. Yeah, a little less conversation, a little more yeah. action, for yeah. sure. Um, now, a little less soft sculpture, a lot a more little, action, a little more construction. Uh, so, <laughs> Pe- Penny says that um, she's a one-trick pony about you, um, and. Jade looks like over this. and says, she's like, a, oh, we don't have to talk about that then. Um, oh, I would like to talk about it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They said that you were um, like a bad Sharon. 
And then someone said, <laughs> oh, she's, she said, ev-, and then later in the episode, there's a point where Serena Chacha or, or where Vivian says, everybody's saying it. And I'm like, ah, I love this. <laughs> Get her shade. Literally, so this is like shady and horrible. all the girls. But this is literally the season that spawned the Getter Jade meme with Coco. Like this season yeah. had so much shade. This season made season four look like uh, uh, an Amu's bouche, bitch, because y'all brought it. Yeah. I mean, season four, we, we we really did our thing, but season five is shady. Um, <sighs> and Roxy says. Your future Rolaska Talks uh, team member says, uh, hope that doesn't land her in the bottom two when they're talking about your one trick poniness. Uh, yeah, that that sucks. That hurt my feelings watching that shit because like everyone was so nice to me in the room. And um, yeah, no, that was shady as fuck. Don't let the tears break the water line. <laughs> but like, were they wrong? It was like, no, like that was the everyone was gonna compare me to Sharon, who had a stellar run on the show, and I was like, uh, I was a fucking mess at the time. And you were wearing pony things, so I mean, it was literally. And I was wearing Sharon's clothes, like her day, like in the workroom, like her daytime clothes. I was wearing the same clothes that she wore on the fucking show. So, like, they are not wrong in any way. And the judges let me know as well. And that's part of the, like, overall development of the, you know, whatever. whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, Well, Roxy lost 70 pounds and they show her pictures from before. And her and Rue have a cute little conversation how, like, Rue was telling her, well, you're not big, but you're uh, thick. And then Roxy goes, and juicy. And it's yes. just, it's perfect. It's Roxy repping right from the beginning for the the, the big and juicy girls. Big yes. and juicy girls. And um, thick and juicy is also what Penny is trying to describe her, her torso as to RuPaul. <laughs> and she's like, I got this torso here. Like she's describing a longshoreman's refrigerator or something. She's like, <laughs> so we do a drop waist to the knee. And then we show a little bit of ankle at the bottom, just in a front oh, slip. Yeah, yeah they, they were all too harsh on Penny's look. And we'll get into that when we get to the runway. I, but I, I thought it was pretty. I don't want to get into it. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. Um, <laughs> but speaking of, RuPaul comes around to you and uh, and she's, she mentions that you're supposed to turn trash into something like a treasure. And um, you, you say you don't flash. have, yeah, that's it. And you say you don't have yeah. a problem with it looking like it came from a dumpster. And Rue nods because she's looking at you, I guess. Well, I was the only one. You. I was the only one in the room who used unconventional materials to make my look. I mean, I mean, I was, was in like, Valentino. I mean, that was Valentino, right? basically. Which is great, Couture. but it's like, why don't you just take fabric off the wall and sew something? Like, I wanted to do something that looked like it was made from trash that I found in a dumpster. And I feel yeah. like I was the only one who did that. And so there was a little bit of like, okay, well, I hope it looks good. I don't know. But I thought I ended up looking really nice. So, yeah. Um, so these mirror chats, getting ready for I the runway. I bring the beast. <laughs> I bring the beast for sure. Alyssa is talking to is walks by Coco and she looks at her director cone titty outfit and says, "Very you." And then and then Coco just freezes. And then <sighs> Alyssa repeats it again from her work table. This is like one of those ooh nurse moments where she has to say it again like, "Very you." Like she wants she wants Coco to know, "I'm just kidding with you. I'm still being funny." But Coco's not having it yet. And Alyssa no. just keeps going, "Very no. you." Like no, no, trying no, no, to show no. the room like she's joking. No, 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 no. What was it? What was Alyssa it? Tell me, girl, is, you were Al- there. Alyssa is a mean girl. Watching this season, Alyssa is so trying to provoke everyone over here. She does it to me, too, in this very scene. She's trying to provoke everybody. She says such rude shit to people. And because she says it like, um, who's the guy? Don Knotts. Uh Because she says it like in this kind of goofy voice. It sort of, like, slips by. But, like, this person is being so shitty to these fucking drag queens in this this show. She is. Uh, Yeah. 
Uh, Monica tells Serena that uh, she should be worried if she's not nervous. Ma- Serena's mouth, it's like unhinged. She comes for Penny and says something about like, they're like, where's Panama? And then she says, between Costa Rica and blah, 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 blah. And then Penny Penny is just like standing right behind her in the line of fire. And Serena looks up and says, you should consider going there. They have a lot of retirement people. The number one retirement place in them. Like, so it's just like, rotted. oh, why was she so, so rotted, rotted to Penny off the get? And was she insulting to you? And what did she say if so? I mean, I really, I had a good time with Serena. I thought she was really nice. But that it's mirror true chat? With the- well, no, I mean, I didn't catch all those little things uh, because I just, I don't. I, where did you, where I was your station? Attention. First of all, where was your station so I can get a, a read well, for the season? Serena and Jinx and I were, if you're looking at the row of mirrors, we were on the very far right. So, By the like, snacks. we were over there. Yes. And where was your station, please? Uh, well, Jinx was on the end, then Serena, then me. No, your closet, I mean. Sorry. Oh, it was um, right by the door, like where you go out to the challenge. Like if you're looking at that door, uh-huh. it's the one on the right. The one on the right. Oh, yeah. okay. I forget who was there for my season there. But that seems like a nice door. Very nice. Yeah, and all your stuff is seen when the girls walk back into the workroom after losing. Yeah, so I like decorated my shelf with like you can kind of see like I put like masks with hats and wig, like a chicken mask, a devil mask, like um on it so it was decorated gorge um you you get asked a lot of questions about your uh relationship about sharon of course they they all just come at you with them oh yeah i mean it it did it it, what it felt like that it felt like everyone wanted to talk about it and of course why not but you know i got to tell them my story and then Alyssa was like oh but she's still the superstar in the relationship right i was like i don't Okay, I don't know. Yeah, who says that? Girl, fucking Alyssa does. <laughs> Alyssa Edwards. Alyssa. Uh, so at this point, the people that have had it with Serena are Detox, Roxy, Vivian, J. <laughs> Vivian, <laughs> Vivian's eyes could be on a cheese plate because they are cutting. Cutting, cutting, cutting girl. Cutting. And she's just saying just that <laughs> mouth. And it is... So Jade, Jade Jolie says the classic line, cover girl don't cover boy, baby. <laughs> And it is Jade's old makeup, by the way. She didn't need any. She's she's a gorgeous little like rainbow bright preteen doll. Yeah. But like her her seeing how her face has changed from then to now, now that she's Taylor Swift, it's like the evolution. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Now no one's featuring Serena at this moment. she, She literally says she's that girl in the dressing room. Um I was this girl once. I was that girl who was like, ooh, I'm only 19. And then you know what happened? Dolly Levi got me kicked out of the Queen Mary. Like, I was that dumb girl talking, that child. And she's like, is it just because I'm 21 and I only had to audition once? Just like coming for all the girls. She said that. that. No, (laughs) and and it it very, it wears very thin, very fast. And if it's not funny, it's just like, then why are you saying it? Like, right, exactly. Yeah, what is your point here? Do you want to alienate these girls that you just met or, or yeah. what? Well, why don't we get into this runway? Uh, let's take a break. Ooh, and can we'll I get take into a break? I need to change my pad. Yeah, you should. We are very excited to tell you all about a new company that is supporting the podcast. We love our sponsors so much. And we got a chance to try out their stunning products. So we want to talk to you about Hawthorne. That's right. They literally have everything you need for personal care, from face cleanser to shampoo to deodorant to cologne. Do you remember the first cologne you wore as a teenager? I do. Charlie? Um, Exclamation. Well, uh, I'm a Charlie girl. (laughs) No, it was, uh, I think it was Armani Aqua Di Gio. And um, I felt so rich and so fancy and so fabulous um, the first time I got a a bottle of cologne. Mm -hmm. So um, as queens, you know, we get to smell 
however we want. We like to smell like a fantasy, like a gorgeous feminine creature. But when we're out of drag and just going about our day-to-day life, it's good to differentiate and to just have like a personal scent. So Hawthorne has a huge array of colognes that are personalized to you and to your life. Yeah, um, I like that Hawthorne has so many options to buy and they use premium quality ingredients. They smell great and they gave us stuff for free to try. And they have a little quiz that can help you find stuff that will make sure the products are right for you, whether your skin quality is oily or dry or your hair texture is fucked or frazzled or amazing. Now, I'm really, really picky about uh, about colognes and about scents. And uh, and so I was skeptical, but I was like, okay, go ahead and send us over some products to try. And they sent over, it's like a they send you two different scents. There's like one for like daytime and one for like special occasions kind of vibe. Work and play. Uh, yes, work and play. Um, and they both were really delicious. And I am not like huge into scents unless it's like the scent of my own BO, which I, I I really love. But no, these are really amazing scents. They're they're subtle, they're um nuanced, they smell expensive as hell, and they're really, really nice. I am getting hints of sandalwood, notes <laughs> yes. of um notes of uh compression garment. Uh Very nice. Yeah, there are tons of options for the cologne scents. All you have to do is take the quiz and then they send you what's going to be right for you. Um, I got for my work scent, it's called Soft and Airy Sandalwood, which it was very soft and very airy. And for the play scent, it's Botanic and Woody, which I loved. I really, really liked it. Big fan of Woody. Um, do, how do you like the other personal products? The deodorant, the shampoo. The shampoo is lovely and the conditioner. I enjoyed both. And uh, there's a, a lotion that I threw down a well for my friend. She's got, she's got a little doggy daycare down there. It's really cute. The packaging is really beautiful and the products are really, really nice. So here's how Hawthorne works. You take a quick two-minute quiz, and Hawthorne tells you the two colognes that are best for you, one for work and one for play. And the quiz also matches you up with hand soaps, lotions, shampoo, and more. Uh, Hawthorne is also totally risk-free with free shipping and free returns. So if you are looking for customized products that are high quality and delivered right to you, look no further. Check out Hawthorne at hawthorne.co. Okay, so that's Hawthorne, H-A-W-T-H-O-R. R N E. Don't forget the E on the end, and use promo code DRAG, drag. to get ten percent off your first purchase. That's H A W T H O R N E dot C O, and use code DRAG, drag. to get ten percent off your purchase. Hawthorne dot C O. That's Hawthorne with an E dot C O with no M. That's right. Hawthorne dot C O. No M. She came from Seattle with a dress and a dream. The sleeper fan favorite and champion of season five, Jinx Jinx Monsoon. Monsoon. Here to take us on a journey with her opinions, memories, and thoughts on season five, let's find out what Jinx Jinx Thanks. Here's the thing I'll say though. My like of of my ugly moments on Drag Race, my entrance look was not one of the ugliest you look moments. Amazing I thought I in. looked great. Yeah, and my makeup was wide, actually too. pretty okay that day. <laughs> um no, I think I, it was funny that like I felt like everyone just kind of thought like, oh, she's going to go home first. But I was like, I was pretty, I was pretty all right on the first day. I was just excited that I did know someone there because I was so certain I wasn't going to know anyone there. But Jade Jolie and I used to, um, we gigged together one summer. We oh, uh... we did a show in Portland together every Wednesday. We were paid 40 bucks. We worked for nice. like five hours. 40 bucks <laughs> oh, plus tips. God. Mm-hmm. Um, we had rehearsals every Monday and the show every Wednesday. And sometimes I would sell jello shots on Thursday and I would Gigging. make more money selling jello shots than I would 
<laughs> at my drag show, show that I was pouring my heart and soul into. <laughs> well, I that's mean, how drag goes. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking about makeup, though, I you you're absolutely right. You looked amazing walking into the workroom. It <laughs> what was, happened? And this happened. This happened to me too a little because we were surrounded by like the most gorgeous, glamorous, fucking drag queens on earth. And it fucks with your head. Roxy, you start J. J. Jolie, look, yeah. Coco, like gorgeous to, girls. Yes. You start to look, detox, you start to look around and you're like, am I doing drag wrong? <laughs> I need to ch- totally change it. Okay, I need a complete overhaul. I need to start doing my makeup completely Girl, different Girl, Vivian now. Panay. I forgot yes. about her. Girl, gorge. Like, how? I I feel like that definitely happened to me. I definitely let other people's styles start to affect my own like conviction in my own style and stuff. Oh, the runway. Bring it to the runway. Runway. Mother is here. It- RuPaul, maybe I just have a soft spot in my heart for this era of RuPaul's glam with, uh, you know, Matthew doing the hair and the makeup. Um, But I just, I really thought uh, she looks so exquisite this season. Oh, yeah. Really exquisite. I love this dress. I would cut five feet off it and wear it as my own. Right. It's beautiful. Ru looks uh, great. Michelle it's looks like a silver and green kind of moment. And she has the sort of sandy, soft blonde, um, curly, effortless hair. Mm-hmm. And and the makeup this season was very um they he went in a little bit more. Matthew She's got did. a full white waterline underneath. And yeah. like the, the the upper isn't touching the lower. She he gave her eyes in this. And at yeah. one point in this episode, you can see all the way around her eyes. She does this yeah. expression and it's like, oh wow, she's got some eye on. It's very um, drag. Like he goes in really deep, and I really um, appreciate that. Michelle's look is a lot right now. What is she Got wearing? I don't a remember. rhinestone bow in her hair, plastic <laughs> pink star earrings, some kind of shoulder shit, a pink frosty lip. It looks like she was still doing her own makeup at this point. Honestly, she probably was. I know. Yeah, she that didn't get uh, lipstick nick till later. Um, but yeah, she's she's got a lot on, and uh, Santino is there again for some reason. And Mike Ruiz uh, is there, which is uh-huh. great. And Camille Grammer is there. And I'll forward you the pictures. She has every right to be there because she is in a wig. Oh, she's yeah. participating. She's participating. I'm not mad. I love that. Yo, 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 yo. Uh, and the runway song is I Bring the Beat, which I uh. love. It's about... Being a space alien, so I was I felt smiled upon by the by the drag gods in that moment. What uh, did they show this runway in the order that you guys walked, or did they change it? Oh, because heaven. first up yeah, to the runway, well, first up to the runway was Roxy. Was she first in the walk in order? Do you remember? I think so because they line us up, and it, it it uh we were lined up in that order. And you were by Vivian and Lanesha. Yeah, I was toward the end of the line. Well, uh, Roxy comes out in this black, uh, sleek, uh, dress with the peekaboo hips and the blonde mm-hmm. mohawk piece. She, Fabulous. She, she feels like if, uh, Fifi's season one, uh, season episode one, season four had a mom who was like the queen. Right. Of, if Fifi was the warrior princess, this Roxy was the queen. It's the same like upsweep hair, big, huge eye. Yeah. Just gorgeous. Uh, really Jinx, gorgeous. Jinx looks like she's dressing for the promo day where y'all are supposed to be goddesses. Because this would have been she perfect is. for that. Yeah, she she's is. She's got this turquoise goddess Grecian vibe going with blonde hair. I get what she's going for. I, I feel like it's kind of Gloria Swanson, kind of like mm-hmm. um, Playing early Shinerazad. Hollywood. Yep, sort of like. Film. Yeah, even with her makeup, like she does the very like Clara Bow kind of eyebrow. Mm-hmm. Um, I love the look she put together. I thought it was Me really too. nice. Yeah, yeah, gorge. Detox comes out in a bra covered in pink sequin fabric, and then it's tacked <laughs> to the center of the bra, and then it's it's a train. When you've um, got that body, a, that's all you girl, have to do, honey. Oh, it's that's the body talk. The body talks. Um, and she looks sickening. The hair is great. She's got a 
big dark eye on and she's got all this fucking attitude and it's so wonderful. And she knows I most of the this. people there. I mean, yeah. she know she knew Rue, she knew Michelle. Um, she'd been I around love it. Yeah, oh, everything. She looks so good. That color hair with that sequin. And Michelle comments, Wow, now I see where last year's backdrop went. Cause you know <laughs> Yeah. Um <laughs> Ivy Winters yes. is l- literally looking like a dream. She <laughs> yes. looks like Nadia Orman in Versace in the 90s. It's just beautiful. The little star brooch. The hair is even cool. Let her be cool and funky with this hair. I don't well, like I don't Dib- love the hair, but like Dibber it's so says cool. it's a Karen wig. <laughs> it's a choppy Karen. Yeah, it's choppy Karen. It's not Karen styled me. like a Karen, but it's chopped Karen. You know, it is. She looks so beautiful. It's a very beautifully she done, is beautiful. detailed, <laughs> gorgeous dress. Uh, yeah. Very well done with uh, for Ivy Winters. Um, Honey Mahogany is giving us, yeah, yes, it is very Pepper LaBeija. She's got yeah. the beaded um, headpiece, Queen of the Night. One of the beads as she's exiting the runway, like f- as she does her final pose, the beads keep moving and it flicks her in the eye. She blinks for one second, and then she goes straight back into model. It's Good. so great. That's um, what you have to do. Yeah, it's shit on shit, and I love it. I love gold. She loves gold. <laughs> <laughs> she picked a great color to go with. No one else really was doing gold. Oh, for go ham on the gold for sure. Um, and Jade comes out. Jade Jolie put on everything. She said, "Oh, are you using that?" She put on everything. Um, I don't. And know I don't how. like her hair. But she somehow managed to make herself look huge. And she is the <laughs> tiniest, like, she's four feet tall. She's so petite. And she made herself just look kind of, like, shapeless. I think this could have worked if she took the shit off her head and she took the NBC peacocks off her chest. <laughs> See, I would have taken the peacock. Just... Mm-hmm. What? Yeah. yeah. I would have put in the peacock around the ear and then okay. done the hair all to one side and then had a one-shoulder red dress with a huge draped sleeve, like, very urte. But, like, mm. she got the best piece of fabric in the trash and made the worst look. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, yes, that's what happened. But that smile and, the ca- and uh, you know, it got her through enough, I guess. Yeah, uh, definitely. And, and dark lady left and dance. <laughs> Alyssa's on the runway with this. It's a lot like her entrance outfit where it's a lot of a lot. And it's, like, it's very magpie. It's, like, so much stuff. Um, and a Catherine Zeta Jones wig. <laughs> it is okay because she dresses like Dracula. <laughs> this is what Lilatia was talking about. She is dressed <laughs> Drag like Dracula. Dracula. Yeah, honestly. Yeah, she's not the wrong. Hair, the hair is nothing groundbreaking. And the she hair put is shit on her shit lipstick. On shit if you. On shit. When RuPaul says the thing about um, y'all are safe or whatever, they zoom in on Alyssa's face and you can see where that curl of that polyester mm-hmm. wig kept spreading the red glitter on her lip to her cheek. Yep. Um, drag is hard. Drag is tough. Um, but yeah, she looks like she's gotten attacked by a, a, <laughs> a, a murder of ravens. Um can I tell you about uh, Dracula's governess penetration? And then she, in this and black then lace she, overlay? She, then she took the upholstery off the couch oh, in the fucking God. clue house and no. tacked it. Yeah. I can't. I'm going to have a heart attack. I hate Penny's outfit, but I Penny? love her. Why do you hate Penny's outfit so much? It is a pink pillowcase with a black overlay and then black beaded accents, which I don't like. She looked um, sickening to me. She looked pretty. Um, I I agree with. I I wish it, the, it was a side slit. What one of the judges said. I just think I agree. It makes it's the outfit is not as funny as as fun as Penny is, and Penny's so fun. And I just wish she was wearing something that she was more comfortable in that she could have more fun in. I think, but she is given a little May West. She's given it a walk. She's doing yeah. her best on the runway, and um, she's yeah. selling it. And she's got a great very smile. confident, very, very confident, very confident. Yeah. Um, the who's next? Uh, Coco, Coco Montrees, and she's putting the B in subtle. I'm telling you, really. This Hard came B. together for me though. The the she, styling is great. The the very like tight kind of finger wave hair. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, and for as crazy as the director tits and the film reel on the side of the head, for as crazy as that could have gone, I I think this came she together. It. She yeah. totally grounds it. And um, honestly, she's walking around like it ain't no thing. She has director co- megaphones on her tits. And she's selling it. You know, she's a drag queen. It's, it's what she does. It I came think, together. I don't yeah. think that it, there was ever a doubt that there was style involved with Coco in any of her outfits. The taste, though, with the yeah. director cones, that's what part is debatable for some. Uh, Vivian comes out looking like um, a trophy wife. Yeah, very stunning. I mean, Vivian like, can't tell Tanae. that was in the trash at all. Right. Yeah, she's doing gold as well. Um, the and hair is just, doing the most work on the runway. That hair the, and the mug. Yeah, the like, hair is great, and her face is very effortlessly gorgeous. The dress is nothing to write home about. Um, yeah, but if you did want to write home, you could, uh, you could, you could talk about Alaska's dress because that's kind of cute. It's, yeah. Uh, did you have a purple gown underneath it? Were you wearing? Were you allowed your own undergarments and underpinnings? No, that was fabric from the trash can. There was purple, and I thought that the the green looked nice over the purple. Uh, And I was very used to making plastic dresses by this point. Penetration stapled me into this garment. Sister. And I wanted to incorporate the, like, recycling aspect of it, so I, I carried a bag of recycling to the end of the runway and dropped it off. I, um, I like it. I I am perplexed as to why I'm not wearing earrings as well with up with up hair like that in a gown. Yeah. I, earrings up. I do would help. Michelle really chose to go in on that too. She's like, "Well, I don't see any earrings, young lady." Well, Camille Grammer liked it, so I like Camille Grammer's wig too. Yeah. Um, except the bottom needed to be brushed out. That's why I was like looking at it and I was like, why does she, Camille's why do those wig? girls look crunchy? Yeah. And then I, I, w- there was a point where she looked over and I got a screen cap and I was like, oh, cause it's a full half wig. Ah. Uh, yeah. Well, I sent screen cap. I, I, I sent you a screen cap. She used her frontal. She used her frontal. She did. So, but... uh, so, uh, um, Lanesha, Lanesha oh looks like gosh. a full on. Uh, like flamenco princess it's this beautiful wallpaper gown with its own like entrance and shoulder fan and she's she has a waist and volume and it looks like oscar de la renta this is one of the best looks to ever walk down the runway and to to (laughs) imagine that she made this out of fucking wallpaper dude it's exquisite. It's fabulous. It is such a deep salute. It's my favorite look. And an Iron Fist shoe in the hair. Yeah. Because, you know. Iron Fist. RuPaul. Uh, just showing it all up. Monica comes out in an outfit that I would totally wear to get dick in. But right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's scoochy. Cute. It's a scoochy outfit. I don't know what... Was it Hollywood? No, it was couture. Was red the carpet couture? Red yeah, that carpet was, couture. That was more ready to wear for sure. But she looked beautiful. Yeah, and she I mean, did look a lot like Lady Miss Keir. Yeah, totally. She's very gorgeous. I don't know that it says red carpet couture, but maybe like for the Grammys or something at that time yeah. that you could actually see a celebrity wearing that. So the uh, Soul Train Lady of Soul Awards. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and we're done. No, Serena Chacha, lest we forget. And we're done. We're not done. Oh, yeah, that wig's done. Oh, what did she do to the side of it? I almost could. She had no friends in the workroom. Oh, goddamn. There are styling choices that are perplexing. Um, yeah. The hair, for what, like, the garment itself actually is kind of nice. But, but then, uh... I mean, there's like a crucifix kind of gold chain. There's like oh, an yeah. ankle boot. There's the, boot the, is bad. the 613, oh. like really tight curl with the black roots with the John Lennon glasses. It seems visionless, which when you listen to her describe it, she's she starts saying like, I was trying to be spooky with it. It's like, the, okay, well, I can see that you you don't know what you're talking about or what you're trying to execute. But the garment itself, I didn't think was bad. I I, like 
I do know that when she was explaining how she was working in the workroom, she said, you know, uh, details first, like when you're like when you paint. And actually, when you like, paint, you do the broad strokes. Details first. Last. You, yeah, you, you do details. details last. Last. So I don't know who taught her how to work and create things, but like that's usually not how it works. Um, yeah. But they're, yeah. They're, it was it was a little perplexing. Um, but good for her. She made it on the show. Not not everybody can say that. Um and well, ladies, girl- some of the girls are deemed safe, but don't call us. We'll call, we'll call you. you. That's all. And she sends them away, and the girls are terrified, but they're glad to be safe. Jinx, Detox, Honey, Monica, Vivian, Alyssa, Coco. They're all safe. They get to go out of the room. Now, for the judges' critiques, I have to tell you, I was terrified this is terrifying. This is the moment you realize that, like, oh, this is how this fucking show works. Because it was like, okay, we're going to say some nice stuff about Roxy. We're going to say some nice stuff about Ivy. We're going to have a really nice conversation with Jade. Then they got to Penny, and it was like sharks eating chum, chum. in the water. It was like... I was like, oh, my God, like, they're being so mean to her. She looks great. She looks just as fine as everybody else up here. But I was like, oh, this is the this is how it works. This is how you see who's in the bottom is like those judges go, went so hard in on her that I was like, oh, fuck. Then. They went to lunch. Uh huh. So we were standing on the stage yep. for an hour. My my feet were dying. I was in plastic. My body temperature was fucking with my brain. And I thought I was going to pass out because I was wrapped in plastic like a fucking ham being reheated. So we're standing up there. The critiques last a really long time. I thought I was going to pass out. And then they're like, okay, before we get to Alaska, we're going to go to lunch. I'm looking down the line. There's only me, Linacia, and Serena left. And I'm like, They've only really been mean to penetration. So, like, I'm fu- I'm going to go. So, I spent all of lunch, and you're not allowed to talk to anybody, but I spent all of lunch convinced that I was going to get red for filth and sent home. Yeah, in your interview, you said something about being the first sent home. That it would be bad, and I agree. But um, yeah. on my season, we had uh, we only had two critiques before we got to lunch on our first episode. Fuck. And there were like eleven. I feel like, and you're um, just sweating bullets, Dina. Sweating you it out. You can't talk to anyone during lunch. We could. No, they do <laughs> not. They did not let us speak to one another. Yeah, I'm sorry. That's my fault. My bad. It was hard ice because they want you to save all discussions for when the cameras are up. Wow. Speaking of when the cameras were on, uh, Santino tells Ivy that she needs to bring the conventional material, the unconventional materials, to the challenge. That the dress is too good and too cleanly made. Um, I, I, this is just bullshit. You know, the girls use what they were provided. I understand that Santino has to have a point of view to keep his job as a judge, but like say something funny at least. Um, well, it's a little like, yes, I, I, I kind of understand because you want something that says, oh, this is trash. This is from the trash, but they should have given you trash then. Instead, they gave everybody more than enough fabric to make fabric outfits, which was their fault, you know? And then they said, do something red carpet couture. So Ivy Winters did exactly that. She looked red carpet ready and then they read her for it. But, you know, that's drag race. (laughs) Whatever. (laughs) That's how it goes sometimes. The winner is none other than Roxy Andrews. I think think Roxy Andrews won this in... Uh, in interview, basically, when she was saying showing the shoes and RuPaul mm-hmm. and like Roxy was so charming, and I think Lanesha's dress, while it spoke to me a little bit more in the in the uh, scope of it and everything, yeah. I think a lot of people would have worn Roxy's too, um, and I think Roxy just sold it up there. Uh, yeah. But she won a custom gown by Marco Marco, friend of the Ooh, pod, yes. plus mm-hmm. immunity. And I saw the gown that she won; it was sickening. It was a. It was kind of the one she wore in the fashion show that she did with him. It's so gorgeous. Oh, yeah, so much body. Yeah, we love Marco Marco, deep friend of the pod. <laughs> um, and, uh, unfortunately, that, yeah, the yeah. bottom two are Penetration and Serena Cha Cha. And um, uh, Party in the USA, Miley. Mm-hmm. This song is uh, 
this song is it's very clear from the get that it that who's gonna win because Penny doesn't know the words to it and um she's trying she's trying to get through it she does a lot of the turn ups to, but this is one of the things that helps explain drag to an audience that doesn't know it like one of the tricks is if you don't know the words you turn up the stage yeah. you, know, you pull out your tit you fight away you do something you get a shot you you drink a whole beer if you don't know a verse <laughs> I don't think well yes that's very good I've done advice. That. Yeah. I don't think penetration was like, oops, I don't know the words at all. I think she was fumbling a little, but I think she was just trying to get the girls at the back involved and like clapping. Oh. That's what she was doing. She was performing to us. And when you're there, you have the four people on the judging panel, and then you have fucking 18 people standing at the back of the stage. Who are you going to perform to if you're used to performing to an audience? You're going to want to you're going to want to work the whole room. So that's my defense of penetration, but okay. it was that makes more sense now to me. Why it, looked it was like that, really hard to see uh her go home because she is really such a fucking class act and really really nice and lovely and um great at drag and she's still out there fucking representing Cincinnati and being the a cabaret fucking amazing. The cabaret in Cincinnati. It's yeah, such bitch. a fun place. Um yeah. and uh I usually go there with hard candy. Hey, Daniel. Um, but uh, I will see her soon. Hopefully, Daniel next call year. hard candy. <laughs> Daniel call hard candy. <laughs> uh, and you know what? Penny Tracia, I said this before, but Penny Tracia showed up the next day for the promo shoot and was lovely to work with, professional, uh, showed up, did amazing, did all the interviews saying, yes, I'm going to win and all this. And that's <laughs> that's a classy-ass fucking drag yeah. fucking queen right there. She get, she gives me classy broad for sure. Yeah. Um. So are there any little things that you could tell us about Untucked? Because uh, we find out that uh, Serena is a clown fucker, according to Alyssa. Yeah, Serena was very flirtatious. I mean, she was... With who? When she wasn't insulting people, was she trying to get dick? Uh, I don't know if it was trying to get dick. I just think she's a flirtatious, like, charismatic person. And I think she was flirting with me a little bit, as I remember. But I don't know. You use all the tools in your toolbox. She's (laughs) She's a young, like, cute person. Like, why not? Go for it. Uh, Roxy is breaking down in Untucked that Alyssa borrowed ideas from all the other queens. Oh, she They're was. They're really giving it to Alyssa. She was like, she went over there. As soon as I put feathers, she put feathers. As soon as I picked up a sparkly ruffle, she put on a sparkly ruffle. As soon as I did a headpiece, she did a headpiece. And it's true. And then they edit it with like, doom, 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 doom. and Alyssa looking around the room and <laughs> then course. like pulling out the thing. So Alyssa's a fucking cartoon character. She's very fun to watch. And this Ser- added to that. Serena and Jade go go in <sighs> on each other. You weren't there for this, were you? <laughs> I don't remember. I, I, I'm I a middle like child. I'm, I'm generally a peacemaker and I don't like conflict. So I would just I like do. try... I would try to laugh and make a joke whenever that kind of shit would happen because it happened a lot this season. (laughs) (laughs) And I tried to not be a part of it. Girl, my favorite thing from this season, which I quote at least once a week to someone, is, Mama, this is garbage. See? (laughs) Alyssa. She's a a mean girl in this season. She told me that she was wearing a $40 synthetic wig, even though she said it was like an $800 human hair or something. That's what (laughs) she told me out of her mouth. So, like, I... I love the legend and the lore of the Edwards, you know? It's just, we she's do. like, drag Bigfoot. There's always stories that you can't believe, but then you're like, wait, no, it's true. It's great. She's a legend. It's true. Uh, Mama, this well, is garbage. There will be, Mama, <laughs> this is garbage. This is garbage. We will get into so much more with this season. What a pleasure this is. And oh, snake we, season. Yeah. Oh, no, that's th- ulcers too. Sorry. Right, yeah. Um, I was still a horse at this point. Horse, horse. It became it's, a snake. It's equine season. Yeah. Um, thank you so much for joining us for Race Chaser Class Class this week. I'm Willem. And I'm Alaska. And we'd love for you to write a little review of our podcast if you got a minute on the podcast yeah. app. And don't forget to subscribe. You just take a moment and you leave us a rating, too. That would be mm-hmm. lovely. Yeah. <laughs> because we, we want to know our value based on a one to five star scale because we are superficial like that. 
Well, we like to hear it, and it also helps more people find our podcast. And can you leave a little on the dresser? I'm a little light this month. <laughs> mm. Sorry, baby, I'm a little light this <laughs> month. No, you can oh. follow. You can follow the, next the John's geese. Here. <laughs> you can follow the geese at Willem at the only Alaska five thousand, and our race chaser account is at race chaser pod. Ooh, plus we have bonus content, la, 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 and la, we're la, talking la. like. 27 minute videos here at mm-hmm. patreon.com slash Willem and it's pay to play so Where's just that? choose which video you like and leave the coins on the dresser and hit the dough you can search for race chaser content by searching with the hashtag wait for it race, race chaser, chaser. You can also email us anytime at racechaserpodcast at gmail.com wear and a this mask. is very important yes wear a mask wash, wash your, your hands, hands. Socially distance, mm-hmm. respect and each I other out saving. there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and oh my god, the ducks! From <laughs> the delay, the ducks are on. Duck are delay. they mighty? <laughs> They're mighty. We want to remind you, as always, Black lives continue to matter every fucking day. Mm-hmm. And because our leaders and government don't always agree to that, make a voting plan now, please. Because mm-hmm. if you don't know what you're doing. Now, November 3rd, that's like close and you need to get registered and all that stuff. You can Google, am I registered to vote? And then input your info and it will tell you if you are registered to vote. It's really easy. And check the show notes uh, for voting registration info. That's right. That's hot goss. That's hot goss. Race Chaser. Race Chaser is not endorsed by World of Wonder, Viacom, or any of their subsidiaries. It is intended for entertainment and informational purposes only. RuPaul's Drag Race and all names, pictures, and audio clips are registered trademarks and or copyrights of their respective trademark and copyright holders. Forever. Race Chaser with Alaskan Willem is a Forever Dog podcast. Produced by Big Dipper. Executive produced by Brett Boehm, Joe Cilio, and Alex Ramsey. Mixed and mastered by Will Pitts. Our theme song is Race Chaser by Alaska Thunderfuck. Oh.